Hello watchers from uh, Software Freedom Kosovo 2020. I am Filip Koval and I will share some experiments and uh, tips about sensor and web things. So who am I? I'm a software engineer based in France and I've been a long time open source contributor and currently part of Mozilla Rep program working on IoT projects. I've been long time involved into open source software in the industry, on Tizen operating system and uh, Yocto for automotive and uh, IoTVT when I was at Samsung. You can contact me and I gave my all my contact on this uh, web page. There you can find some presentation of previous uh, conferences and some video of demos and uh, some updates about what I'm going and what I'm doing. And if you're curious about uh, what I've been done and what we can do, feel free to reach me and uh, I am available for IR cooperation. So you can link to me for ongoing uh, works. And uh, today I will uh, explain my journey about playing with sensors, what I've done and the different kind of sensor, specific uh, tips for each sensor and uh, some example and use cases and uh, what did I learn about this and how can it be improved for developers that want to use sensors. So how can sensors be used for, for high Internet of Things uh, use case? Also, this is something I will mention at the end of the presentation. So first, you probably know about sensor, but let's uh, make a quick, uh, a quick uh, recap. So sensor are just measuring physical variations. So it can be something physical, mechanical, it can be something chemical or just about uh, some environment like uh, sounds or um, variation of light and so on. And uh, the sensor is producing an output value that can be used by a computer or a machine. So one, one example is what is the temperature in the room? That's what the sensor is supposed to answer. And an actuator is something different because it is producing a, a physical action. So it can be like a motor and it's consuming an order, like an input value, like turn the light on. So, for instance, I can have a ambient light sensor, which is telling that the ambient brightness is too low, and then I can decide to turn on the light with a switch, which is the actuator. That's both are working together, usually. So, some, some, some examples about sensors. So, we have a binary sensor, like uh, it tells if a, a door or window is open or closed or analog sensor like uh, it's uh, measuring the humidity level in a, in a room or in a soil for instance and usually it's a voltage that tells uh, it uh, can be converted to a value for instance of humidity it's uh, a percentage we have also a numerical sensor that can move from zero usually to a higher number and it can define different uh, situation like for a tank level we can have only three position like uh, it's empty is there is some or it's full and uh, we have also a mechanism called sensor fusion which is usually a combination of different sensor and it is producing a, an, an, a more interesting uh, output like uh, air quality sensor will tell you if the air is uh, breathable or not. And we have all kind of uh, so-called uh, sensors, usually there are devices which are connected to cloud or web, and we have also uh, online sensors and uh, also radio sensor, for instance, uh, weather uh, forecast is uh, broadcasted in the air. So I will only speak about uh, the four first sensors I mentioned here. So now let's talk about uh, your system, which is a, a computer usually, and it has different kind of input-output uh, way to interact with the outside. So for binary result, we have uh, something called uh, GPIO, and uh, for analog we have uh, ADC input, and uh, for digital value we are using different buses like uh, the I square C, SPI, and UART. So let's talk about um, the first uh, use case, but also know there is also other buses on your computer, like uh, the pulse with modulation, the CAN uh, wires for automotive or USB or other input output uh, standard. 
So for prototyping, uh, some tips I can share if you are playing with sensor. So usually sensor are very small species and it's uh, the size of uh, it's smaller than like of your nail. So it's quite difficult to solder to a PCB. You need a, a lot of practice or some good equipment. So usually it's better to work uh, with uh, small modules uh, where you can um, just uh, put it on uh, your single board computer and it's easy to easier to to develop with but you need some extra wires to connect it uh, the, um, to the right pins so you should be really careful and also we have some kind of Dototo boards like uh, this one for instance it's uh, something you plug on a Raspberry Pi and uh, it's quite straightforward, there is no risk of breaking anything if you are under this uh, with some cushion and usually it's just plug on your computer spin like this one so it's quite easy to, to use so I can recommend to get those kind of ads for Raspberry Pi or Arduino Shields and there are other names for other uh, uh, brand so let's talk about now the binary sensor I just mentioned above. So it's using GPIO. I didn't define what is it. So it's a general purpose input output uh, pin. So it's something uh, it's, which is uh, on the CPU itself and it's exposed to the board uh, from the extension board I just shown of the Raspberry Pi for, for instance. We have different pins on this uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, each of them have different uh, feature like uh, the general output is uh, the most important one. So it can be configured dynamically as input, like if you want to plug a sensor, or output if you want to control an actuator. And it's only two voltage, either it's low or high. You have different levels, so you need to be careful about this because you can uh, break your, your board. So yeah, be cautious when using this specifically uh, as an output, you can burn your component. Now we have also analog sensors, so they are producing a, a, num a numerical value, so a number, it's not a boolean like true or false, and uh, it needs an analog and digital converter, so you have this on most microcontrollers, but you don't have this on a Raspberry Pi for instance, you need an extra component to use uh, analog input uh, sensors. And what this is sensor doing, basically it's um, translating a physical uh, phenomena to a voltage, so it can be something uh, that should be converted in the software side, so this sensor is producing different kind of number in a, in a range and you need to make some computation to understand what it's measuring in the reality. So a couple of sensors, so there is a guard sensor like uh, MQ sensors, you have also the proximity sensor which is a, a radar, which is something quite popular and it can be pl pl plugged on the board uh, if you have a DC input. So here is a short uh, demonstration with uh, some sensors. So it's uh, a flower, I'm monitoring the, the moisture of the, of the ground, of the soil. So if there is some water inside the soil, it's, uh, it will be measured on this uh, application. So we have 82% of humidity and it's connected to this uh, pin uh, which is an analog input of this uh, microcontroller board and the use case here on my application I will explain a bit later that when this uh, input is below a threshold I'm sending a, a notification to the Mastodon network so it's a social network using an IoT context so basically we have a uh, a rule that says that uh, if it's below 77 then I'm sending a notification. So to do this here I have I'm above the threshold and if I disconnect the sensor it will go below this level progressively okay and then it will be sent a, a notification to my cell phone. Let's talk about digital sensor like uh, using the I square C bus that stands for Enter Integrated uh, Circuit. It's something that's been created uh, many years ago now and it uh, provides a serial communication on a bus. So you have different devices you can put uh, above uh, 100 
and it's only working with uh, four wires, like uh, one for data, the other for clock, and uh, the last two for supply. So to use it on a Raspberry Pi, for instance, you need a first a Raspberry Pi for sure. And uh, if it's not enabled, you can use a Raspi config tool, and then it will provide a I square C um, file device in slash dev, and then you can use this uh, I square C detect tool, and it will list uh, all the device uh, connected to your Raspberry Pi. So I can get started with this ambient light sensor. The BH1750. It's a two byte um, um, ambient light sensor and uh, it's, it is measuring uh, the brightness between 1 and uh, 65k lux uh, of um, light. And uh, you can get all the detail in the data sheet. It's not something easy to read, but uh, you, with there you will have the flow of the i square c protocol and also the address of the device. And if you look for a driver, uh, you can implement yours, but uh, I suggest to look about what the community has been shared, and there is near to 100, so that's a lot. So I had a look at them. So for Arduino, it's easy, because if you're using Arduino IDE, you will find it uh, using the library uh, repository. If you're using embed, you have to look on the website uh, and there is uh, one, I found one at least, but you need to look at uh, all the different web pages. For Python, there is at least 11. And for Node.js on the NPM repository, I counted uh, eight. So let's start one, uh, let's try one with Node.js. So there is one driver, I need it to fork it for supporting IoTGS also, but I will explain later. So first you need to import the module, then you need to create an object uh, with uh, some options. So first you need to define uh, the device for the I2C bus. So on the Raspberry Pi there is two, you need to use uh, one for the external uh, bus. And uh, then select the address of the I2C sensor and a few parameters for the resolution and the width of the data output. So you need to create the sensor object and then you just need to create to call the red light function and uh, it will uh, call a callback function with a value. Now um, smart city proof of concept uh, using car. I wanted to detect uh, if my car is under a defective street light and then uh, share the position of my car and the brightness uh, uh, level to uh, a cloud and then get from somebody that it should be fixed. So to do this, uh, I have all these devices here. And uh, the first one is, uh, so it's a GPS uh, emulated on a Hero Raspberry Pi Zero, which is uh, emulating in real time. And I have also this uh, extra application on the phone which is indicating the position because it's connecting to this uh, GPS unit. And then for the street light I have this uh, illuminance uh, ambient light uh, sensor which is under this uh, small lamp. And also a relay to turn on a light when it's too dark it will switch it on. So under my, uh, my lamp there is this ambient light sensor and um, in the end you can see uh, a value which is uh, reporting the current, uh, current uh, brightness and if it's below a threshold it will uh, turn on the, the light and also report the value and the position to a, a cloud backend. So this uh, system can be interesting to, to find when it was checked, uh, what is uh, the position and what was uh, the luminance uh, measured. So here it's using uh, RT Cloud, which is no more available. So if I put some, sh just cover my light, it will turn on the light as you can see.
and then we have emery moment sensor uh, it's really easy to get started with a temperature sensor there is a couple so you can order online it's super cheap and uh, sometimes there is a combination of uh, temperature on the humidity or pressure and uh, also you can get some sensor already uh, shipped on uh, this uh, sense at um, uh, board for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so there is also air quality sensor. So SDS one is quite popular because it's used by the Luvdat and project, which aim to measure the air quality level in uh, all the cities of Europe and probably elsewhere. It's now rebranded as a sensor community. So you can get a part of it and uh, try to report. And of course there is a gas sensor also, or UV if you want to protect from the sun. So for the temperature sensor, BMP80 from Bosch, you need to import uh, this uh, JavaScript module. And then you can uh, create this uh, sensor object and you need to put the right address and it can be configured in different uh, behavior. And then first you need to calibrate the sensor and once it's done you can read and once it's done you can just uh, print the data. So here is a demonstration with this uh, sensor. Um, so the application here is a uh, web thing and running on this uh, development board. It's a gateway with just connecting a uh, different uh, device like this lamp and from this uh, dashboard I'm controlling the lamp because I have an actuator and I made uh, some rules with using this uh, sound sensor which can be used as a clap to turn on and off the light I have also the ambient light sensor again and uh, also the temperature sensor so if I'm putting some heating on it it will turn a fan actuator and will uh, uh, try to put fresh air on my orchid. So the light itself here is uh, an AV light controller. It's running on ESP8266. And I have also a moisture sensor here running on the Arduino Mega. And then when it's below a threshold, I have this uh, add-on actuator which is sending a notification to the Mastodon network so somebody like my neighbor can water my plant when I'm speaking elsewhere. So we have also motion sensor which are sometimes a combination of accelerometer, gyroscope, and optionally a magnetic sensor. And we have a fusion to avoid uh, drifting too much. Then you can use this to get the accurate position of uh, your thing. And you can use this also as a compass. There are several devices uh, to do a motion sensor. Uh, some are more accurate than others because you can measure uh, the orientation um, um, in some direction but not all because if it's below the gravity um, it will not uh, work as you want it so maybe you need to have a look about uh, which sensor to get uh, for what you want so I'm using here the one from NXP which is FXOS one so you need to use this uh, serverless plus code and to um, to use embed uh, operating system so first you need to include the library which is defining the basic structures and the driver and then you can create uh, an i square c object which is matching the the pins uh, on this uh, freedom k64 f board which has a uh, uh, this uh, sensor, accelerator sensor on this uh, board and you can create it from this uh, I2C bus and then you can uh, also prepare a value structure where you can get the vector acceleration so you need first to enable the 
accelerometer sensor then you get the axis uh, vector and then you can print uh, the direction of the acceleration uh, so there is this uh, LSM uh, 9D from ST which is on this uh, uh, board it's uh, an initial measurement unit sensor which is a combination of three sensors uh, so we are telling this as a nine degree of freedom sensor and uh, it's uh, there is a, a module which is supporting this uh, sense at uh, for Raspberry Pi and it has only two functions wants to enable uh, each sensor and then you can get uh, use get function to get access to the orientation and the accelerometer and the magnetics so here is the demonstration using this uh, sense at uh, uh, so to do this uh, demo I use this uh, Mozilla Hubs uh, platform it's an online service uh, for a 3D environment where several people can interact together using a, a cell phone, a, a web browser or a VR headset it's running on the web and uh, people can move like in a video games and they can chat together and also uh, talk together because there is a voice of an IP system and what I made in this demonstration is try to um, interact with uh, real objects and virtual objects so I'm updating this little house uh, toy on my desk and it's updated at the same time uh, in the virtual world which is seen on the on my web browser on my cell phone on the camera picture so you can see it's uh, updated in real time but the sensor is uh, progressively uh, converging to the actual position and also you have all the other uh, um, angles which are indicating the direction of my sensor and uh, on the sensor you can see there is some letters we are which are updating uh, in which direction the sensor is at a given time So it's a driver mess. This is what I learned about uh, using all the sensors because there are many sensors from the community. They are not so much, um, not so well uh, maintained. So sometimes you need to patch them. It's not often uh, the upstream is not really responding sometimes. So you need to handle to manage forks and so on. And um, I, what I noticed that most of them are using. A custom API but they are still all doing the same thing so you need to initialize then to start and read and stop and eventually fail that's always the same operation uh, in, the, in many languages uh, it's uh, the same so I tried some on Linux using Node.js on Python or some real-time operating system like Arduino, NetX or Embed and also mobile phone are their own platform and they have their own API for sensor on Android or iOS and Tizen also because phones are uh, shipping uh, sensor like uh, GPS and orientation and compass for some of them also and uh, application running on the web browser of the cell phone can also get access to the, the phone sensor so there is, I believe, there is some lack of unification, so it doesn't make sense to create a new standard to try to align uh, all the sensor because uh, it will just create a more mess. And uh, I think that uh, the API that has been uh, proposed by the web is quite uh, flexible enough to be implemented in a different context. So the W3C specified the sensor API. It can be used to uh, um, try to drive consistency between all the sensor API and it's providing a set of interface to enable new use case and to speed up and is a specification and implementation of new sensors. The web as we know can be inspiring for other uh, beyond what is used today. The web is platform agnostic, so that's pretty cool because we can target different systems. It's programmable server of cli or client side, 
And on the client side, we have JavaScript, which is an interpreted language, which is quite popular. It's running in the browser or on the server side or on in the other headless uh, application. And JavaScript can be also supported by microcontroller because the language itself is not too much complicated and it can fit in a very constrained memory. So I made this generic sensor light uh, module. It's a JavaScript uh, implementation of the W3C generic sensor specification. It's all open source. You can file bug and send patches to this uh, repository. And it's providing a high level API for and supporting many sensors or actual device or simulator if it's not yet implemented. And it's targeting a constrained device like a microcontroller. You can use uh, several JavaScript runtime, like uh, Node.js if you are developing on Linux, and then you can deploy to microcontroller which are supporting IoT.js, which is an alternative uh, runtime. I will explain about it later. So the flow is straightforward. So first you need to create a sensor object. You can uh, set uh, an option like the frequency if you want to, to uh, uh, read it uh, each second or less you can uh, adjust this uh, when you are creating the object and then you need to set the callback function and the most important one is on reading that will get uh, your value back to your application and uh, then you need to just start it and it will loop on reading the value will be updated uh, on uh, each read and uh, the on reading callback will be called and then it will sleep until the next read and then you can stop the sensor. So here is an example where you can uh, simulate the sensor. So to do this, you need to import the generic sensor light uh, module from JavaScript, then create, uh, for instance, a geolocation sensor. You can adjust the frequency to be below one time per second. Set the re on reading callback function that we just uh, print uh, the latitude and longitude of this uh, measurement and then uh, stop the sensor. So to use it, you just then need to start it. And if you are running a Node.js, it will just print to console your uh, position. So I want to share this and uh, want to inspire you if you want to create a new driver. So you can try to look at the solar color sensor I made. It was made ready to be added to the generic sensor. So here is the demonstration with this uh, sensor. So yeah, it's an, um, an experiment when I try to update uh, VR world from uh, uh, reality. So here I'm changing the color of my cube from this uh, piece of paper from here, from green to blue. Now uh, here are the spotted uh, device. So uh, only two devices are aligned to W3C's genetic sensor specification, like the ambient light and the temperature. And I was inspired also to provide the humidity and this uh, color sensor we just uh, shown. And uh, also I'm simulating currently the accelerometer, um, battery level, geolocation, orientation, and proximity. And if there is other sensors that uh, was to be added, let me know, file a bug, and we'll try to add it. So to run, it's using the JavaScript runtime. Let me explain about what is IoTGS. So it's using JavaScript interpreter. It's not modern JavaScript, but it has a very low footprint. So it's staying flash below 200K of uh, flash and uh, only uh, 26 uh, kilobytes of RAM for Hello World. So it should be a bit more with uh, sensors. And it has uh, some uh, support of uh, built-in modules like uh, uh, supporting different buses like uh, analog digital, I2C, and also SPI, UART, and so on can be useful for sensor and also extra module for 
connectivity, file system, and so on. And also you can use uh, external JavaScript module from the community. So you can use this, uh, all the drivers I've shown for supporting uh, IoTGS. And also it's supporting uh, Linux and Tizen and NetX and Tizen RT for microcontroller. So here is demonstration using uh, an analog sensor. So in this box, I have a, a gas sensor and it's uh, running on Tizen RT and I also this uh, radio antenna for using a lower one uh, network. So if I put some gas on my uh, my sensor, it will uh, go below threshold and then a notification to the radio LoRa system. So I have here received uh, my payload on the gateway. This demo on Tizen RT should give credit back to Nutex uh, Rare Team Operating System. This project is committed to comply standard. So just like Unix, it's an operating system supporting POSIX and CC standard. And if you are a new Linux user or developer, you will feel like home because you will find all your device in a slash dev directory. And uh, you can program network application using BSD socket. And it's, this one is using micro IP implementation. It has been released many years ago by Gregory Nutt and recently it has been incubated by Apache 2 Foundation. As I said, it's a base of many derivative projects and products like uh, drones and uh, also a uh, dev board and so on. The good news is that IoTGS is supporting Nutex and I can give some uh, uh, hints about how can you deploy JavaScript application to a microcontroller. So first, so you need the Nutex uh, source code and you need to add on it uh, IoTGS as a, an extra application. And uh, you need to create a partition which uh, will be populated by uh, your main JavaScript application, which is usually a loop doing the same thing again and over again, and add its uh, dependency like a JavaScript module, like the sensor module I've shown just before. Then you need to run a startup script from Natex shell. It will just start the interpreter and like uh, loading your JavaScript file into IoTGS uh, app. And then you can deploy a firmware for your favorite uh, microcontroller. So the same application can be deployed to different, different uh, systems without changing too much because it's abstracted by the JavaScript uh, implementation of uh, each uh, hardware. So I'm using a STM32 F7 uh, processor on a nuclear board. That's uh, the board you see in the background here. Yeah. So you can get some details about how I'm doing this and uh, how I made a JavaScript robot. This has been shown at uh, NetX uh, workshop this year. So maybe now we, if you know how to deal with how to deal with Samsung, maybe you want to create IoT application and eventually going online. So first, let me uh, insist about uh, you should consider privacy and security because this can be really critical. And uh, there are several protocols you can use: um, MQTT, Lightweight M2M, CoAP, or more web-inspired technology like uh, CoAP, HTTP, or WebSocket for real time. And uh, you, you should know that there is a, a group at W3C called the Web of Things, known as uh, What. And uh, this project wants to provide the technology to link devices together on the internet. And uh, there is also a free software implementation inspired by the Web of Things work. It's called the Web Thing Smart Home Platform, and it's a good example about uh, how can privacy be handled uh, a bit differently. So most, uh, many uh, IoT products you find on the market are relying on the cloud, so you can not get access to your device uh, directly. You need to use an app from your phone and then get connected to the internet, which connects to your home and collect uh, all your data. Maybe this can be done differently. This is what we see on the, what you can see on the left. So you can have all your device together and your home network and your data can be stored on your local gateway, which is not going elsewhere. And then you can eventually connect to your device from home or from the internet through a tunnel. 
So this project uh, was born into Mozilla Imaging Technology Lab, and now it's uh, following its own life. And it still have a privacy by design in mind, and it's, it's still working in collaboration with uh, W3C. It's uh, been simplified, but uh, there is some wish to align uh, the most uh, it is the most we can. So to get started, there is also a framework to build WebSync. So basically, WebSyncs are just servers which are providing a REST API. It can be implemented in the language of your choice. And uh, the description about uh, the thing itself is just a, a JSON description following a, a schema. And then all the things are connected together through a gateway, which provides a, a user interface to view and control your things and automate them. And it's also extensible, so you can add add on like this generic sensor adapter if you want to use the sensor on the gateway itself. But first, let me show a quick um, introduction about WebSync REST API. So the example I added to the Genomic Sensor project can be used using IoT GS on Node. And you just need to start a server that will uh, be provide some endpoints. And if you go to the default endpoint properties, you can get access to each uh, sensor values, each properties. So here is a demonstration of the add-on. So you can get uh, an idea about uh, how does the uh, WebSync dashboard is. So I'm connecting here to my gateway. I can add some new adapters, like the generic sensor one. This is an early version. And then uh, it's listed among other, among other add ons. And then from the things UI, I can decide to connect all my things. So, first, let's connect some GPIO adapter so we can provide some uh, uh, sensor or actuator because it's controlling uh, the light color, which, which is uh, this Anavi light uh, microcontroller running on ESP3266. And then I can add my sensor, which are connected to my gateway. And then from my dashboard, I can decide to turn on this uh, sensor, which is an actuator here. And then I can see the updated uh, level. Then I have this same from the temperature sensor. I'm turning it on, and it will updating at the same time. From this, we can create some kind of uh, automation by creating uh, new rules. Like, um, so you need to select a different device. So as an output, I select my red LED. And uh, as input, I'm selecting my sensor. And from the level property, when it's above a threshold, like 100, I'm turning the LED to red. So, so that's my uh, rule. So if I'm shadowing my sensor and unshadowing, it will turn on and off. That's how it works. So I turned it on, but I didn't turn it off. So to do this, to turn it off, Automatically, you need to create an inverse uh, rule that says that uh, when it's uh, below 100, it should turn the light to green. So yeah, that's how it works. And uh, yeah, it can be changed to avoid uh, Quality, for instance. Yeah. So it pro this adapter improved the scenes. Now it's uh, the more it's supporting more sensor and it's more uh, the display better. So the summary of this presentation is that uh, 
sensor driver can use a uniform API like uh, the generic sensor from WV3C and uh, the generic sensor light is implementing this specification in JavaScript and it can work on a microcontroller using IoT GS runtime or a full feature operating system like Linux and using Node.js for instance. And then you can create uh, web things for application. You can use this uh, smart home prop gateway and create web things to connect all the device together. And you can also put sensor on the gateway itself with a generic sensor add-on. And uh, yeah, I think we are near the end now. So your feedback is very valuable. I shared some notes and source code. Feel free to file issue or send patches if it's unclear. And I want to thank everyone for the, which uh, giving this uh, presentation in live of afterwards. And Mozilla Reps and the uh, WebSync's uh, community also are very helpful for this work. And uh, yeah, I'm open for questions. If there is any, I can answer on uh, the SFK uh, channels, or you can find me online later. Thanks a lot. So that will keep going for a bit more. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Phil, for that uh, wonderful presentation, I would say. Uh, it really started back uh, down from the basics and to the more specific things there, where, you know, the more professional uh, guys, people that have already been experimenting can um, get involved, especially in the in the Mozilla project, I, I would say, uh, which I think is a wonderful web-based project. Um, so we have a few questions here on the chat. Uh, we had Ankelena asking, you mentioned communication protocols like SPI, I2C, and UART. In what cases do you use one or the other? OK, that's a technical question. So um, each, each bus communication bus has different um, uh, capabilities. For instance, uh, SPI is um, faster, so it's, it's quite interesting if you want to deal with uh, memory chips or something like this for a sensor, unless you need high, really high um, sample rate, it doesn't make sense. You can rely on I square C bus. And this bus is interesting because it's something where you can put a, a lot of units and then you can go uh, you can go uh, in, in a far farther than your processing uh, place. And uh, I know also there is a, um, another standard based on I square C for probably uh, industry industrial uh, use cases. UART is most of the, it's the simplest one, something you probably use when you were in the in 70s when you were using all school modems. This is basically uh, just a single channel, so there is only one UART uh, serial port per computer. Maybe you can have a bit more, but you will not put a lot of sensor. Um, this is interesting also when you have some uh, uh, modules that are reporting a lot of data in a different structure, like I'm thinking about uh, a GPS, for instance. You can grab all the satellite uh, tri trace, like um, NMEA, uh, it's uh, something used in modems also, you can use UART port. So what I would um, answer that I square C is probably the easiest one. You can get uh, a lot of ships uh, for any kind of feature. And only, unless you need something specific, uh, maybe you could go with SPI. That's why I explain it a lot. So if you want to get started, you can buy this kind of uh, module. It's uh, something you can get uh, online for a few bucks. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, and if you want something more uh, full feature, maybe you don't need a single component. Maybe you want to buy something with already some con kind of connectivity, like uh, the, for instance, I'm thinking about the Bluetooth uh, sensor you put in your flower to monitoring your, the, the pH of the soil or the humidity. This come to the next question. Yes, uh, so Besford is asking, can you tell us more about smart ag agriculture and can you share with us the list of sensors that you would need or could use, uh, I guess? Okay, so 
Smart target culture is a bit, um, um, maybe I, I, I'm not reaching that level because this, this is just a, a proof of concept I made with just a, a flower from my uh, wife. And uh, if you want, so uh, let me answer. So I had this uh, uh, moisture sensor. This is basically just um, mm, too wise because it's uh, making some kind of electro electrolyze of the soil. So yeah, it depends on the continuity of the of this uh, between two pins. I don't have it here, but it's really, really, really easy. You can even build some by yourself using just a PCB and just uh, put this into the, the 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 soil. And if there is a, a lot of a, a little bit of humidity, the electricity is going through. Then I use the other sensor I uh, mentioned in the uh, in uh, in the slide. So I have a BH uh, 17 for the the ambient light, and also uh, the temperature sensor, which is quite generic. But if you want to go into smart agriculture, probably you should monitor the the acidity level of the soil. That's something you can get uh, with another sensor. And also, I know that uh, many use cases are using like cameras just to see the color of your of your plants if they are not looking too too well and uh, if they are attacked by any kind of insect and uh, probably in the agriculture you have a lot of uh, different um, elements so maybe you need to uh, monitor the, the infrastructure itself so i'm thinking about uh, like accelerometer sensor if something is broken it's breaking in your field you can detect it for instance and it did depend at, at uh, which level you go for. In my case, it was a really small experiment and something I didn't had yet, but I wanted to add a, a small pump that will uh, pump the water to uh, dry the, the, the flower. That's something I can do and automate with uh, Mozilla rules. That's um, the web thing uh, platform can be able to do this kind of use case, I believe. Um, so recently, WebThings was uh, spinned up from Mozilla. Can you tell us what the future of this that's, of this project will be? Yes. Okay. So this is something I didn't mention too much, but uh, yeah, Mozilla ma didn't um, put uh, WebThing into its priority project. So it was now it's a community project, and uh, the good thing is that. Um, the key maintainers who are working on this web thing at Mozilla are now still working on this um, for other use cases. So there is one commercial product which is um, um, on the market yet. So it's a digital signage for one of the core developers. You can get some information if you reach the web thing community. And something interesting is that um, the, the gateway and the software itself um, is stable enough to uh, support a lot of uh, different add-ons. So we have uh, above 100 of add-ons coming from the community. And something um, interesting is that the, the platform itself is quite flexible. You can support a new kind of IoT or smart home device, but you can do much more like uh, uh, trying to interact with online services and so on. So I made a presentation about interacting with uh, Activity Pub. Um, for instance, you can make uh, a virtual thing that uh, send or receive uh, Social uh, feeds that something uh, can be interesting if you want to to interact for the, the smart home uh, uh, use case. So yeah, the community itself uh, is partly hosted at Mozilla for the chat room, for the um, the forums and so on. But uh, the, all the rest of the infrastructure, so the source code and so on, is now living on GitHub on its own repository. And uh, yeah. If you are want to join, you feel free to. Uh, you will find people that uh, can give you some insight. And for the future, I would say, as long as the community is still here, I'm not concerned about this project. Yeah. Uh, you're mute. I cannot hear you. Sorry. Uh, so, if you want to experiment with web things at our hackerspace, how would you recommend that we do it? Any uh, devices that we could get. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Our members. So, let me describe a little bit. So, WebSync Gateway is just uh, an, um, 
a software image you put on your Raspberry Pi. You can deploy also on another computer, but it's easier to get uh, the reference platform, which is the Raspberry Pi. If you just turn it on, it will work, but you will not control anything, but you have some kind of virtual things. So this means you can add a fake uh, sensor or fake uh, actuators. So to, 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 from a programmer point of view, that's enough. You can do a lot of stuff. For a hacker point of view, it's a bit frustrating because you probably want to see uh, real things happening in your reality. So either you get into um, buying some modules, the one I mentioned that can be um, uh, a good start, but I think it's uh, it can be preferable if you're not uh, used to electronics to buy um, <coughs> some daughter board for your favorite computer. So if you are using a Raspberry Pi, I mentioned about this uh, sense at uh, module. Um, it's it's uh, more expensive than just a single uh, unit, but what I like in this kind of product is that you have no ambiguity when you plug it on, usually there is no false contact, so to get started maybe it will save you some time and maybe it's stable when if you want to move in a different place, I don't know about how is your hacker space, but in our place everything is moving at the same time, so when you put something on maybe something somebody can touch it and break it, so yeah, I would recommend to get a Raspberry Pi and uh, uh, this uh, sense out from the Raspberry Pi, there is a couple of other and uh, let me promote also my friend uh, Leon Anavi, maybe you know him, he's from uh, Bulgaria, he's making uh, Raspberry Pi hats with, uh, with some sensor on top of it, that's something interesting. And if you want to get into microcontroller, maybe I will suggest the same, so there is a, okay, the ESP32 ESP um, or 8266 like quite popular and then rather cheap, but you can find many others like uh, what ST is doing with uh, his STM32 board, and you can have also some extra uh, top hat shield, it's an Arduino shield compatible. Uh, also, the NXP one, can they are not that expensive, but they are uh, providing some connectivity, so this is good for, uh, for making IoT application. So yeah, I, I would say if you coming from a Linux background, go with Raspberry Pi and then you try to deploy with uh, uh, microcontroller, and this can be done also in JavaScript, as I explained during the presentation. So good luck if you, even if you want to, to make a, like an event or just a, um, a kickoff uh, meeting. I can help if you need to. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, thank you very much. We're starting soon, actually, a, a user group, a hardware user group at Hackerspace, which will meet. Uh, so for local people, uh, you know, uh, follow us and uh, see when those meetings will happen. You know, the situation permitting. So we, it won't be big groups, but hopefully we can get something started and maybe mix online and offline. Mm, in our um, place in France, uh, our worker space uh, is slowly recovering and uh, that's fine. I, I hope so it will stay that way. Good luck anyway. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, Phil, thank you very much. And it was a very nice presentation. And, Thanks. Uh, look forward to uh, interacting with you more in the future. Sure.